You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview innovators in the space every week. Ivan, why don't you go ahead and introduce today's guest? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Ivan Zak, and I'm happy to introduce you to Lisa Hu. The topic today is veterinary freelancing. So Lisa's background is she's a co-founder and CEO of Roo, uh, the first platform connecting veterinary professionals, the freelancers, and locums to the veterinary clinics. She's an advisor at Zeg Artificial Intelligence, a 3D AI startup. She previously was at Amazon, ESPN, and Accenture, and she holds a Master of Business Administration from the London Business School. On a personal side of things, uh, one of her favorite podcasts is Planet Money. She taught and supported over 300 impoverished students in Western Kenya through International School of Champions and has a real estate license. Lisa, quite a diverse background. How did you end up in the veterinary space? Thank you for that intro. Um, For me, I mean, just with my background, I, I did come more from the media and tech side and hitting different industries. And actually, the last startup I was at was doing um, augmented reality and computer vision AI work. And while it was really interesting in terms of a technology product side, I kept on thinking, you know, is, who are we helping in what industry, right? Are we solving any problems? And, you know, I did that for a while. And then last year, I reconnected with one of my good friends, who's actually one of the co-founders of Rue, David Strauss. And he had answered animal health care years ago. And I was always intrigued by this industry, just, you know, all the professionals in it and obviously ultimately the pet owners. But to me, um, I was just hearing a lot about the challenges in this industry. So there's a lot happening on the consumer tech care side. So you see the rising rovers happening and there's a lot of organic dog food out there. But when you go behind the curtains with, you know, everyone servicing these pet owners and the pets, so the hospitals, right, clinics, um, the veterinarians, technicians, just I was quite shocked at how underserved that B2B market is and how a lot of the processes are very antiquated, um, how they run some of the platforms or software is from the 1980s. But, you know, one of the big challenges I heard is the biggest challenge is just talent matching or hospitals trying to find ideal professionals, um, the vets, techs to service the hospitals and pet needs. And that has dire consequences when they can't find a lot of vets, they have to typically shut down clinics for the day or week, et cetera. And then on the professional side, I didn't realize that a lot of these veterinarians are overworked, stressed, not making sometimes a lot of income in which um, you know, they have to pay off student loan debt. And, you know, to me, when I was hearing about all this and having my <laughs> startup tech mindset, I was just thinking, isn't there an easy platform or some website that can connect the two sides, right, to help the hospitals with production, but also help veterinarians and, and other professionals just have a far more flexible, better life. And the fact that I learned then was, you know, in this more traditional industry, there's huge problems and it was lacking technology to fix it. That's how I basically joined forces with David and other folks to come on. So their industry expertise combined more with my, my tech, not necessarily coding skills, but just more of a tech infrastructure plus business and starting up teams from nothing to something. That's how I kind of entered this market. And the fact that we can actually, you know, do something game changing in this industry and help change the way hospitals operate and how veterinarians work and actually do workplace transformation in this industry and ultimately have great effects you know, in this industry and, and ultimately to the pet owners, that's, you know, a main reason I came over here and how I entered this space. <laughs> this is super exciting. We've talked in the past and I told you that, you know, majority of my career in the veterinary space when I was working as a vet, I worked as an emergency veterinarian. Then I did all the relief work for the hospitals uh, that were affiliated or just in the area. And so there, there's lots of issues that are associated not only with the difficulty to find the veterinarian, but also to staff them long term. And then there's mm-hmm. there's also abrupt, you know, someone drops the shift. It doesn't happen very often, but I just was talking about it last week. I was talking to a group of developers that, I, that I'm affiliated with. And I was at their stand-up meeting, and then uh, one of them in the stand-up meeting, he said, my wife called. She has a cold. 
and uh, I think that I might have the virus that she has, so I want to go home because everybody else can get sick in this office here, so I'll go home. I was like, oh my God, like (laughs) when I worked as an emergency veterinarian, I was on Vancouver Island, I never could skip a shift because I was the only vet Mm -hmm. for the night for the entire island. You can't leave. You're the only guy 150 kilometers around. So so it is a big problem if you lose a vet and you don't have replacement or the means to find one. So it really resonates with me what you do. Why, Why don't you help us to understand how does the platform work and what does it do for the hospitals and what does it do for the freelance veterinarians? To me, I kind of think of Rue as a super simplified version of LinkedIn meets Uber, but for the animal health professionals. So you've got both sides, um, the hospital, you know, call it whether it's a practice manager or it could be medical directors, and then the other side of veterinarians. So they both create profiles and you have transparency around the skill sets, the just attributes. So the hospital provides information on how they operate, et cetera. That's talked about their skill sets, what schools they went to can they do surgeries, et cetera. So both sides create profiles. And then this is basically a marketplace, you know, of the demand of hospitals putting out relief shifts or welcome shifts, think, you know, what they need, and then the supply of the veterinarian professionals who'd be interested. So and basically, as far as how it works then, is once both sides sign up, hospitals say, hey, I need someone tomorrow or November 30th, you know, here's type number of appointments we estimate, there might be dental surgery, and then they post it. And given that, we set the price um, because we do have a pricing table, depending on the type of shift there is. Once that, you know, is posted, then we either alert the vets or, um, you know, they do searches. We constantly have them searching. Um, They go through, and we have a lot of shifts available. And then uh, in our first market, then from the vet side, they see it. If they see a shift they like, hey, this is something I can do, they request it. Once they request it, the hospital gets an alert right away, um, and they have about 24 hours to confirm that that shift. And, you know, they can see the profile of the vet. You know, if it works out, they press confirm. Then um, that's it. Like, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're almost like this brokering platform to connect the two sides. So then once that, that happens, you know, uh, we, and we collect payment from the hospital. Um, and then once that happens, and, and, and prior to that, we do a little bit onboarding, making sure both sides, you know, just we send the right emails and prep them. And then the shift happens. After the shift happens, they rate each other, which is also um, an interesting feature we've introduced where hospital rates the vet, that rates the hospital. And that really does um, put out accountability. Um, but once that happens and the vet rates the hospital, then we do a payout to the vet. And that's it. And then we see this happening again and again. And and because it's so easy to use, both sides keep on coming back. And this is not just for vets. Now we've also just introduced it to technicians as well. So that's essentially how Rue works. And I encourage people to go to Rue.vet because once they see it, it's meant to be super seamless, um, very easy to use and, you know, beneficial for both sides. So one of the first things that comes to my mind is how do you prevent people from abusing the system and like actually mm-hmm. validating their credentials? You know, what if I can't remember the podcast that I listened to, but it was done by the LA times. And there was this guy that faked that he was a doctor a medical doctor and did all kinds of crazy stuff. But how do you, how do you verify their credentials? Well, there's twofold. The first part is when they first sign up for the platform. Right. And we do have a little onboarding part to it. We do do a lookup on their license and, you know, do kind of like a high level background check to make sure that that everything is is valid. Um, I do have people on the ground who do try to talk to these um, vets prior to their first shift. After that, though, this is where the ratings kick in because you could start telling that the quality (laughs) of the vet and then and and the performance from that. So it's actually been working really well now, um, you know, and, and, and I do, of course, as we really scale up, and get thousands on, um, there might be a rainy day scenario where we have to ensure, you know, it might not be the right individual and we take appropriate actions. Um, but that's what we're doing right now. Now, from a technician side, it is also similar onboarding, but we do do a five to 10 minutes interview to validate that, yeah, you know, their, their experience, but also help to classify the, the type of tier, you know, uh, of uh, technician skills that they have. Pretty cool. So, yeah. um, so that brings uh, brings me to the topic that we bring up quite a lot, and it's you know 
it's, it's, it's everywhere in the media and um, about the burnout and the you know the suicides and everything in the industry this this seems to me like a system that could really provide the flexibility of your own schedule and that's what i was sort of after when i was doing local work i would well I was hoping that I will make my own schedule. Instead, I was working emergency uh, four days in a row. And then, you know, and then the other three of the week I was doing the locum work. But in ideal yeah. world, you can actually schedule yourself to do, you know, three, four shifts a week everywhere where you want. And yeah. uh, that was the beauty of the locum. But it seems like this can bring uh, that flexibility. Do you hear any feedback about that, about you know, improving the lifestyle, being a locum? Do you, do you do any promotions or is it a little earlier for you to do this outreach with how that can change your life if you're stressed out? We've absolutely started seeing not only great feedback, but a behavioral change. And, and actually, we do have some locums using us essentially full-time, using us for their full-time job because they do see the benefits of using us on a platform, you know, 20 plus times in a month versus being committed to one hospital, you know, six days a week. Now, what we're seeing, and, and you know, just since we launched in, in January, in a spectrum of veterinarians, we really see three types. The first are these core RUVETs. So these are veterinarians using us 18, 20 plus times a month. And the feedback we've had is, you know, one that I think one of her quote was, I get to see my family more now. But what they realize is, hey, wait, I can work 20 times a month, so less than before, make more income, and also have a support community of folks who really want to make sure I have a balanced life. Because for me at Rue, it's not just about matching for, you know, relief or locum services. This is about genuinely wanting to help support and give a community to these folks. So that's one group we have. Um, I'm hearing stories of some folks thinking about leaving their full-time corporate job to just use us full-time. So that's one group. The second group, which I love, is the flex vet. So great example are the women coming off of maternity leave, right? So when they come off, they do not want to go back and work six times a week, right? They are using our platform to work three to four times. And again, we have a plethora of, of demand of shifts out there. They pick and choose and they are working three, you know, typically about 10 plus times a month on our platform. Um, and then the other group we see within the flex are actually um, formally retired vets, but they have valid licenses. They weren't working before, but now at Ruth, um, we have one, one vet, he's now using us five to 10 times a month, you know, and, and um, practicing again and doing a great job. Um, and then the third category we're seeing are the full-time or moonlighter. So these are vets who have already the full-time gigs Typically, these are the younger millennials, but they, while they are working a lot, they will use Rue about one to three times a month to make that extra income. But across the spectrum, yes, we're hearing this notion of, wow, this is giving me more flexibility. Um, and that's what we want to hear from them. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. So, so that resonates with me so much because when I developed sort of my own little system just for me, it wasn't scalable, but to organize the locums and the, and, and the shifts and, and how to stack them and, and how to control my own time, basically a huge benefit from it. And I think that will also play a big role in the, the burnout is that it's so stressful to get the right job. And then you're you're stuck in it. And then if you're not happy, it takes a long time. And you know it takes it takes courage to leave your work that where you're not happy. What I loved about locums, you show up. If you think that the culture is not right, if you think that the people are not right, you don't get along with the technician or the other doctor. Mm -hmm. Just don't come back. That's it. And there's there's very little ties. But if you like it, you come back. I'm a huge proponent of using all the protocols in the clinics. I don't bring my own rules. I just basically come in, you know, follow whatever the protocols they have. And just, if I like the environment, I come back. If I don't, I don't. And it's, it's great. I, I was so passionate about it actually, when I started right. Locum, that I wanted to go back to vet schools and actually teach uh, the fourth year students, the career path of working mm -hmm. as a locum vet, which I think is a great opportunity actually is to go out there because it, it takes a little bit of guts. You know, there's classic engagements as the, as the work environment. And then you, you really have to, you know, you, you graduate, you find a good job and then you go there. But I found, well, I was a little entrepreneurial all the time. So I found it in probably first year of out of school that you can do this as well. And uh, so I think that this is, you know, this is a great opportunity yeah. to, to bring it early into the vet schools as well. 
Yeah, you make a really good point because one scenario we are seeing evolve are the fact that that grad students, right, they're coming right out. They don't want to have to commit right away to this binding contract. They like testing the waters, right? And this is in conjunction with a more overarching theme of this whole gig economy, right? People wanting to kind of be a bit independent, but we are seeing um, a situation where there are a few vets now, they just graduated in the past year, where they just want to, you know, do um, mostly wellness work at shelters, and they kind of just dabble into different hospitals and test it out. And either they keep on doing that and remain independent contractors, or there might be some, you know, clinic who then they go through through do a few shifts and then they realize, wait a minute, this is a great vet and, and that vet also likes the hospital. And then it's a full-time placement, which we also offer up because we realize, you know, I don't think it's going to be hundred percent locum <laughs> on our platform, but, but we can help with that almost like a temp to perm type transition. Right. So that with the younger generation of those coming out of, of, of vet schools, but also just in, in general, if a hospital's interviewing a vet for a full-time position and they do want to just do a bit of a trial, they can use our platform to do that and then decide that. So but the veterinary is also, again, along with technicians. Well, the other, the other niche for that is, you, you just mentioned the shelters, but if you think about it, there's other veterinarians that are graduating with the passions towards, towards the engagement that are not very well paid, such as zoo animals, wildlife, exotics, you know, something that is really a passion rather than the moneymaker. So this is another way of following your passion and then making also a living off the extra shifts on the side. So I think that that's, that's potentially a good application of it as well. But the new thing that you're doing that you mentioned in the past to me is that you're engaging now technicians. And I know that, that that's been um, really well developed in the UK. From what I've seen, the locoming uh, technicians is, is, is a norm and which is not something that is practiced widely in the U.S. So can you tell us a little bit about the, the traction there? Are you getting any technicians of, uh, of leveraging the platform? Yeah, so what, one thing to note, we literally just launched, <laughs> expanded our platform and introduced it to technicians about two weeks ago. So it's still pretty nascent. Um, but even just within these first two weeks, oh, we're having um, a lot of great technicians signing up and that whole onboarding of they sign up, we do a quick interview, they have a tier um, that's great. And we just completed our first few shifts with text. Now, personally, I'm really excited about this because it makes me think back to this story um, last year where I, I was actually in a, in a lift uh, and my, my lift driver, and I was in Houston, my lift driver was actually a vet tech. And, you know, we were chatting and she had a full-time job as a vet tech. And I was like, oh, you have a full-time job, but you're doing lift. And she basically told me, she said, well, I'm doing lift at night because I need more money to feed my family. And that struck a chord with me. And, you know, this was when we were just building up the website of Rue. But I started telling her about Rue and saying, hey, you know, we're going to build this website. It's first going to be for vets and we're going to expand it to technicians. You'll be able to go in and search for available shifts. You can request it and the hospital can confirm and you can go in. Even if, before I ended my, you know, my pitch to her she immediately got it and she was like, oh my gosh, when can I join? I absolutely need to join this. I'm going to tell my friends. And, you know, she, she was like, I would absolutely use Rue to take on more work opportunities than drive Lyft at night. <laughs> and so that was almost like a turning point for me and just more of almost like expediting me wanting to get this product out to really help people. Like we said, that Lyft driver and others out there who really can see this value of, more having more work variety, but also help gain more income where, you know, for technicians, the average income in the U.S. is less than 30000 a year. So when we introduce this, I just love that we're, we're helping, um, you know, these professionals, um, it, it, you know, not just with the income, but, you know, beyond that. So, yes, it's, it's been exciting so far. It is still early, but we do see great traction um, to date. Okay, so I was going to say it's interesting to see your guys' rollout strategy. It reminds me of like Craigslist or some of the other websites that I've seen in the past. It looks like you guys are kind of going across America. Can you talk to us a little bit about your rollout strategy and why you chose to do what you're doing? I mean, we first officially launched Rue end-to-end, having a you know, workable platform about uh, January of this year and in our first market of Houston. And we chose Houston mainly because my co-founder business partner um, 
they own a certain animal hospital chain there, and we wanted to pilot it to make sure that we got that demand of hospitals and supplies that's the, that first set on. And, you know, just being able to, if we have to afford any mistakes or whatever, just, just getting that out there. But very shortly after, we just organically started growing. I mean, hospitals started coming on left, right, um, putting in shifts. And that started coming on. And I do have a fantastic team on the ground doing that user acquisition. And it's not just about getting, you know, vets and techs on to sign up, but it is about that active engagement and them continuously using Rue. So we started in Houston. Um, our natural inclinations, and we started now, is uh, expansion to Dallas because, you know, you know, just if a vet has a license um, in one state, that vet can practice in any hospital in that state, right? Um, and we do see some vets going among cities in, in Texas. But we have expanded to Dallas and just also because we already had demand and supply naturally just come on, just waiting for us. <laughs> so um, we've done that. And then I do, we definitely want to go beyond that. Um, and I want to hit the coastal city. So my aim is to then expand to the California um, market, you know, LA, San Diego, San Francisco, and of course the East Coast as well. So this is about turnkeying up to many cities and ultimately, yeah, hitting all of the cities in the U.S. For each city we launch, there's more hospitals and professionals we can instantly help right there. Once you get that mechanics down expansion, I, international expansion too is in the play because I know this is a this isn't just a problem we're fixing in the U.S. You know, I hear similar challenges in, in other countries as far as where Wu can help them. Thanks so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. We're pretty social people, so you'll find us on every social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at the veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. Thanks so much for listening.